Air conditioning allows ever more people to work more comfortably inside skyscrapers. And taller skyscrapers, housing more workers, offer greater profits. The only problem is that bigger skyscrapers take much longer to build. To reach the dizzying 417 meters of the World Trade Center, engineers have to invent a new, much faster way of building skyscrapers. Long before the Twin Towers in New York become the tallest buildings in the world, their developers face a mammoth problem. The minute they start construction, the clock starts ticking. Every day their building is unfinished costs them dearly. So they have to work out how to reduce the construction time to the absolute minimum. The solution they come up with is to prefabricate sections of the towers and assemble them like a giant jigsaw puzzle. They build the sections off-site and ship them to the tower's construction site precisely when they are needed. The only problem is how to lift the super-heavy 50-ton sections into place quickly enough. The traditional tool to build skyscrapers like the Empire State Building is the derrick crane. But to get derricks from one floor to the next, they have to be disassembled, carried up, and reassembled, a process that can take two days. Such a crane is not going to be fast enough for the World Trade Center. These buildings were higher than anything that had been constructed in the past. So naturally, we cast our eyes about the world to see what was there and what might be better suited to the project. The team find a revolutionary crane in Australia. It can lift 50 tons, and four of them can reach into every corner of a twin tower. And once they have assembled three floors, an amazing thing happens. The bottom of the crane releases, glides up three stories, and locks back into place. And then the whole crane jumps itself up to the next level. That's why it's called the kangaroo crane. They were fast. Um, well, they had some defects. Uh, they spread a lot of oil around, so it was a constant cleanup operation after them and so forth. But uh, they were fast and, and quite reliable. With the help of the prefabricated sections and the jumping kangaroo cranes, the Twin Towers take shape rapidly. The builders manage to finish up to two floors every week. In 1970, World Trade Tower 1 becomes the tallest building in the world. And while even more floors appear at the top, tenants move in at the bottom. Time is money. On the Burj Dubai, the kangaroo crane is still the crane of choice. Here, the builders have taken prefabrication to a new level. Several years ago, you wouldn't have done this building in concrete because it wasn't, you couldn't build it fast enough because time is very, very expensive commodity because uh, you're, you're, you're not making your revenue to pay for the building until the building's occupied. But nowadays, Concrete building is like a factory. They're like vertical factory. They, they kind of jump themselves up the building as you fill it with the concrete, so you can go quite quickly. So they get a, a floor or virtually every three days. There's, there's a new floor, a new floor, a new floor. The key to speed is a new technology called jump forming. The process starts at the bottom of the building. 
Steel workers assemble steel cages that will become the backbone for the floors and walls of the Burj Dubai. The kangaroo cranes hoist the steel cages up and slot them into special molds called jump forms. In goes the concrete, and 12 hours later when the concrete hardens, the form gets ready for the jump. Hydraulic pistons push the form up, leaving the concrete block behind. It takes only two hours for the form to move up to the next level, where the process starts all over again. This way, the Burj Dubai is cast in place, layer by layer, like a giant wedding cake. But delivering concrete to the top of the tower gets more difficult with every floor. It's five o'clock, and the men on the day shift go home. But on the top of the Burj Dubai, the casting crew are waiting for the concrete to arrive. What we're standing on right now will be the 155th floor. Uh, so we're going to pour some walls tonight. Below, workers prepare the pumps. They can really only pour concrete at night because in the searing daytime temperatures, the concrete would overheat. They need 630 horsepower pumps to cope with the 25 tons of concrete contained in each pipe. And they're about to pump this concrete higher than anyone has ever done before. An amazing challenge for the pumping system. We're pumping 570 meters at the moment, which is a world record for a building site. It's a very aggressive environment within the pipe with the high pressures, the aggregates uh, rubbing against the steel. Uh, you, you've got to watch out because you can wear through the steel and the pipes burst. It takes 40 minutes for the concrete to travel up the pipes from the bottom to the 155th floor. It's a combined effort of raw machine power and subtle chemistry. If the concrete is too thin and set slowly, it causes delays. If it's too thick, it may set too soon and block the pipes. That night, it takes until 4 a.m. before the job is finished. Now the concrete and steel skeleton of the Burj Dubai is nearly complete. On a mammoth project that will cost about $1 billion to build, every day is precious.